Of course, one of the most obvious statements in the scriptures today for anybody who has faith is simply this. Nothing will be impossible for God. He's almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing. We were taught this from the very beginning of our religious education, probably as a small child or very, very young. And so what we are experiencing in terms of the present age is a tremendous, overbearing, overpowering materialism. We've all probably heard this word. Materialism. Material. Having material. Material possessions, uh, material this, material that, everything hard and fast, and you know everything that is made of stuff, material. And so sometimes it's difficult for people to think beyond material. Because in some ways it's threatening to think about beyond the material. This is what horror movies are made of. This is what E.T. and all the science fiction things that are part of the imagination of human beings and our technology to create almost vibrantly alive animations and so on, is there's a fascination with what is either on the borderline of material or is non-material. Of course, we know that the nature of the soul is non-material. And that's why some people don't believe it exists, because it's not, it's not material. It doesn't qualify as anything that we can measure. We keep running up against this whole sense of material. It's not necessarily anything wrong with material, because we're made out of material, first of all, you know. But there's something about the reading today that kind of goes a little bit unnoticed, you know. Of course, Mary is very prominent, and that's most important. But this Gabriel, Gabriel, what do we know about Gabriel? Well, we know, we know that he appears in the, in the scriptures and worked with Daniel in the Old Testament and, and, and all the angels. Of course, I'm named after St. Michael, you know? So it's kind of interesting. Gabriel, the messenger angel sent from God. Well, that's nice. That's nice. We think, we think positively of the good angels. We think positively of the angels. Gabriel, the messenger angel sent from God. He's an angel. He's an angel. An angel, heavenly being, not a human. It's not a human. But another living being that's part and one of the mysteries of heaven of heaven is something to think about, something to pray about or meditate about. One thing that we need to understand in our understanding of angels is the word angel is the name of a function. Isn't that interesting? The word angel is the name of a function, not of a nature. For they are always spirits, but are called angels when they are sent. That makes it even more mysterious when we look at it from that perspective. But we have to choose words to give us an idea of what we're talking about, angels. And so, we come to understand there's nine orders of angels. Some of us may have heard this before. It's not talked about frequently, but nine orders of angels. Angels, archangels, virtues, powers, principalities, dominations, thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. And so we know a little bit more about the so-called categorizations of these mysterious beings. 
St. Thomas Aquinas said this, angels are not individuals. That's kind of surprising. Angels are not individuals of the same species as man is. We're a species, the, the, the human species, homo sapiens. That's how the scientists have categorized us in the animal world. It's kind of degrading, isn't it, to think that we're part of the animal world? And so angels are not individuals of the same species as man is. But every individual angel constitutes a species in and of itself. Now that's beyond our categorizations because it's something so out of this world, it's hard to concretize in any way of thinking except they are magnificently different in their own realm of who they are. Each one a completely different creation or understanding. And, and why is that? When you do some research, and I've done some research, and why, why is that? And this is according to all the saints and so on and so forth. Because of the absence of matter. There you go, we're going to lose some people there. The absence of matter, what are you talking about? There's no, absence of matter is nothing. And then we ask ourselves the question, is there such thing as nothing? What is nothing? We use it in our way of thinking. Because of the absence of matter, which individualizes and multiplies forms numerically. Yeah, you got to think about that a little bit. The whole sense that we procreate. We're very much alike in our humanness. We're very much the same. Personalities are different. But we're made up of the same matter. And we call it living matter as opposed to dead matter. The angels were all created in the state of sanctifying grace. Now there's another term. It's a particularly Catholic term. Sanctifying grace. The angels are created in the state of sanctifying grace. We weren't. We were not created in the state of sanctifying grace. And that's a hard thing in terms of uh, Christianity to understand. We were not created in the state of sanctifying grace. We were created in the state of original sin. Now there's a controversy among Christians. We were created in the state of original sin because of the fall, because of that other mystery we can't completely describe, the fall. The world's not perfect. Think about what's going on in the world today, around Christmas time, the Middle East. How ironic is that, that that horror is going on so close to Christmas? Was it planned that way? Who knows how evil operates behind the scenes? Or this whole thing in the Ukraine? Think about all those innocent people that are caught in that nightmare. We were not conceived in the state of sanctifying grace. We were conceived in the state of original grace or original sin. And so that's why we're baptized. Baptism. Some angels, this is where it gets even a little bit more complicated, some committed the sin of pride. There we go. It's one of the capital sins, because human beings can commit the sin of pride too. But to think that the angels committed that sin is a mystery in itself too. Because then what do we have? We have the so-called bad angels. We have Satan and demons. We don't like to talk about that. It's a little scary. It's amazing how many movies are made about that though. <laughs> and so... Some committed the sin of pride, abusing their freedom, which human beings can do too, abusing freedom. And they were cast into hell. We don't like to talk about that either too. We'd rather talk about heaven. We don't want to talk about hell. It's a little scary. And so, but then there's this about what Jesus said. Jesus himself said this, and this is coming from the power of his divinity. 
In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 18, it says this, Christ attests he saw Satan being hurled down like a lightning bolt. Jesus is saying that. And so what we come to understand in our life, the good angels assist and help us. Where bad angels, often commonly known as demons, entice to evil with temptation and can invade the body by obsession. That's happening in our world today. In many ways, it's kind of happening all around us, even in our own Shelby County, Memphis. But then in the midst of all that Mary had to accept by faith, the angel said this to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And so the one thing that is a message to us in this season, is let us find ways to please God, like Mary. Amen. Amen.